Did you just count me down from six? Well, I, yeah, that's, I did. That's a weird choice. No, it gives you one extra second. One extra second. That's all I give you. Like, sometimes that's all I need. There you go. That's how you get a sculpt done sometimes. One extra second. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. I said it right, and I said it fast. Uh, today we're painting up Scourge, the Executioner, uh, right-hand man of the Enchantress. And I thought we'd do something a little bit different. I got him all based up, ready to go. Got a couple different colors out on the palette. Who knows where we'll go with them. I'm not really sure. I kind of got like an idea, but maybe? I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll see what the chat says. I say kick it to the mini cam because I'm just rambly brambly. And let's get painting. And let's just start doing this. I'm going to start with some skin tones. I'm just going to mix up something pretty. Because there's no wrong way to do that. Just any color you want. As a base. And get a base color on there. And then we'll start working on the costume. I think I'm going to put a little bit more warmth in there. <clears throat> Bonjour. Hola. Welcome to the stream, everybody. It's atomic mass painting time. We got so much to paint. Because our collections are so awesome and big. That's a true fact statement, by the way. I don't know about you, but my, my pile of potential is ginormous. And I would not have it any other way. So we're just doing a little base color here. Ahoy hoy, hello, Doom McGinnis. I think we're gonna have I think we're gonna put gloves on him. I can't remember if the can't remember when we painted the studio miniature so long ago. If we did gloves or not. I don't have a reference. I'm totally not using reference today. Because um we're sort of free forming it. We're just having a good time and just painting it up. Let's get so I'm thinking like a leather, I'm thinking leather for this part of the costume. And I think we make it look like, like we texture it like leather leather. Seeker 911 has a pile of potential. It's the best part of the hobby. All those wonderful ideas in your head and then the opportunity to see them come to fruition. So I think, yeah, we're going to texture this up leathery. Sort of like, um, sort of like a blacksmith or a medieval executioner. So we'll put a lot of texture on here and then we'll use some colors to kind of darken and richen it out.
This guy has a lot of fun to work on. Did we show some? Did we show some of his cards recently, somewhere? Did we show the weapons of Midgar car, Midgard card? I think we did. Yeah, I thought so. A fun little homage to his MCU counterpart. Leather boots. So I'm thinking, do we keep the magenta axe? On the center of the chest, it's such an iconic part of his Costume? I feel like chat's on board. Oh, and we posted the new dates for Mini Stravaganza. I don't know if they're ready for Mini Strav. Too much goodness. Too much goodness. Fry says it sounds like a good plan. I believe that's in relation to the magenta axe. We haven't shown the updated main draft schedule though, have we? No, not yet. Ooh. See what I'm doing? I'm giving a little, little, little taste, little, little, little tease. Oh, studio light, you're always in my way. All right, the start of leather. <laughs> Santa, you haven't shown the update of Main Street Office Angel until now. I don't have that power. No. I have the power to give Summer and BK anxiety. <laughs> like, what is this fool going to say? That's, that's, if it's one thing I'm known for is keeping people on their toes. Is that a little off-white? And we're going to do some kind of highlights and scratches, texture on this brown. Some dots. I 
<clears throat> Summer needs a kill button that sends the show to it. We'll be right back with a bottle of knocked over paint. I'm in. Yeah, send that to graphic design. We need like a little a little we'll be back song. Light against dark creates high contrast, makes it lovely. Contrast, contrast, contrasts. So many different types of contrast in the world. Just little scritches. Right around those knuckles, that's where the tension lies. If you put the high value highlight around those, uh, what's called stress points, it shows more of the tension and, um, um, creates better contrast. Sharpen the brush. Right on those edges. Creating that stress. You know, the top and the bottom of the belt, and then you do a couple of little lines going diagonally across, it creates that stress. Shows the wear and tear. You gotta think about where wear and tear happens. Where the wear happens. Don't get predictable. Make sure your lines are not, um, when I'm looking at like weathering or textures, a lot of times I notice that um, it becomes what I call convoluted, uh, which sounds like a very harsh word, but it's just a good way to describe um, when uh, the random lines become predictable and not random and not placed in the proper areas. Like when you're, um, you know, say you're weathering a car for your Marvel Crisis Protocol and the damage is kind of lying um, in a spot that doesn't normally catch damage. I mean, damage can happen anywhere, obviously. But you want to kind of predict and paint in a way that's like a very um, representational Nick Day, I'm really sad I was putting together a super giant and her upper arm flew off somewhere to the abyss. Yeah, I've had miniatures, uh, you know, my entire life. I've been building miniatures for a long, long time, uh, 30 years. And, uh, you know, sometimes you, you lose a bit. Um, you know, a lot, lot of miniatures have, have little bits. So you gotta be careful. Uh, I learned from some real old school um, um, miniature uh, hobbyists a long time ago uh, to build over um, a box lid. And that's a good way 
to uh, make sure you're not losing bits. You know, get a box lid, which you have. You know, uh, Marvel Christ Protocol provides you with a wonderful box lid. Um, and um, build over that. Uh, I see a lot of people say use tweezers. I recommend not using tweezers, personally. Because um, they can pinch too tight. You don't want that. Uh, these are cut into his head because they are tattoos. And there's, there's two ways to put detail on a miniature. You can have it raised, or you can have it inset. And uh, when we were working on this one lovely scourge, we thought, hey, for, uh, for those who are not particularly excited, um, unlike Dallas, who I get real excited about the idea of freehand, for those not excited about freehand, let's put in uh, the tattoos. So we could either do them raised or inset. Now, of course, if you do them raised, they, they look more real and um, three-dimensional and more like a actual, um, you know, element. Uh, by doing them inset, once you paint it uh, black, uh, it just looks like a tattoo. It just looks, the black sort of pushes all the, everything down, and it works quite well. So those are sculpted on for those who do not want to um, do freehand. If you do want to freehand, it's easier as well because now it's just a little line cut into the head. So it's very easy for you to throw some putty in there where um, let's say if it was raised, you'd have to shave it down, which is more work, just more tedious. Um, but say you don't want those tattoos or you want to do a different tattoo um, with it, uh, cut in there, you can just throw a little putty in there, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, it's done. Um, if it was raised, you would have to shave those down and uh, do much more work. So there's a lot, there's a lot of decisions being made um, when we're designing miniatures. And, you know, sometimes the answer might not be obvious to why a decision is made without understanding all that entails to make the miniature. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of intrinsic knowledge and back and forth on why we do things the way we do. But if you ever want to know, you can ask the questions and I am happy to answer what I can, when I can, how I can about anything to do with miniature and miniature design. Well, it's my favorite part of the job is uh, miniature design. It's it's my most passionate thing. I don't like tweezers. I like um, I'm personally a big fan of a little uh, blue tack on a on a toothpick. If you do a little blue tack on a toothpick, um, you can you can uh, grab a tiny piece. There's a lot of tricks out there. Um, I love going to the old historical um, websites and checking out what those cats are doing. Um, you know, they've been doing it a long time. You know. There's always a new trick to learn when you're when you're working with miniatures. But yeah, a little blue tack. 
goes a long, long way on a toothpick and you just grab that, um, those little bits. Um, like I said, every, every, every manager's company has got small bits. It's just part of nature's. I mean, it's in the name, right? Miniature. Um, so finding ways to um, work within those uh, limitations and boundaries. Um, as I was saying, blue tack on a on a toothpick is a fantastic trick. Building on the frame is a great trick. And not putty his neck, but that's okay. I'm going to put sort of a five o'clock shadow, so I'm just going to use that line anyways. It's going to be sort of painted. So we're putting a little warm in there. Doesn't matter what skin tone we pick. Um, if they're living in human, or not, not necessarily human, but if they're living putting a little warmth in the skin tone uh, just indicates life and makes the miniature feel more alive. So I'm a big fan of adding a little warmth to it. How can you change a wet palette topper? Once a project? Oh! Uh... I'm probably not the best person to answer that question. Um, I'm terrible at changing my wet pal topper. Um, I typically change it when, um, how do I say this without sounding gross? I change it when it's time, if you know what I mean. Like if it smells like the Mississippi River, you should probably change it. Um, I'm really bad about changing my wet pal topper. Um, I'm I'm also a monster where I will just be like, I'm painting this miniature and I open a web palette and I'm like, that paint looks like it'll work. And like it doesn't matter what colors on there, I just make whatever colors I want. Uh, so really the answer is just when it when it needs to be cleaned and then sterilize it and clean it up. So add a little green to that skin tone. Some medium to thin it out, make it more translucent. A little green over the red turns red into brown. But with it being a little translucent, not going quite over top of everything, keeps that warmth in mind. Very important. And many skin tones have this little touch of green in there, so. This makes it look more realistic. Okay, what's next? Let's darken up the the leather a little bit. And darken in some of this leather. Like the lines around these studs. like that. This is black and brown. You can still see that little bit of texture. It's 
some people might find it easier to paint uh, the axe off. Um, I am under the firm opinion if my brush can't reach it, you can't see it. So I don't particularly care if it's not quite painted proper underneath. Not for competition. If it was for competition, we'd have in a different conversation. Remember, you got to choose the destiny of your miniatures. How's executioner time going? I think it's going quite well. Thank you very much. So we added blue to the leather. We added red to the skin. So even though they have like a lot of similar tones, they read very different. And that creates that wonderful contrast that we like so much. Differentiates the elements on the miniature. You can even do some counter scratches with your dark color. To the light scratches. Maybe this is always the tricky part, the upper part of the miniature, because this is where I flip it upside down. On stream, it's tricky. second brush to kind of pull that out. Same here. And then we'll highlight this one more time probably. Very quick and messy. I like quick and messy. Found a taco truck. That's what I would name it. Quick and messy. Quick and messy tacos. Because that's how you're going to get them. Quick and messy. Just slapping some heavy shadow on the underside of those gloves. And on the back side, it's almost like a wash there. Just letting that, letting a little water in there do its work. And then that lower back to really emphasize that the mass of his back. This guy's just a slab of beef. Okay, we're going to darken up. So we have a warm brown and a cold brown. We're going to darken up the cold brown now.
Do the underside of the brow ridge, the eyeballs, like the ocular spheres. Your sit goatee. See, with those being inset. Makes painting super easy. Now I'll go back and darken this up because I want it to like, I want that black to just push and not be any light going on because that's going to, that's going to be what helps make them dif disappear. Get a little paint on the outside, that's fine. Use your second brush, clean that up. Uh, any recommendations on how to replace my super giant arm? Uh, oh yeah, tentacle, um, yeah, green stuff, um, get a vacuum cleaner and you put a pair of pantyhose over the nozzle and then you vacuum and then the pantyhose will prevent the little bits from going up inside the uh, the vacuum, and you'll collect all the little bits you dropped over the years. Too heavy, too heavy. Clean that out. There we go. Let's get that grisly five o'clock shadow. Second brush to draw it out. Darken underneath the arms. I'm not doing anything real fancy on the arms here. We're getting them what I like to call done. Well, do you see that? Watch me just wipe that right across his face. What a terrible aim. I'm just using the an actual very, very bad brush. To kind of just put some highlights in.
smooth out that blend. Get that highlight on that arm. Tops of those ears are super important. Just keep working around until you get the desired effect you want. Oh, everyone has first time sculpting. Probably look um, bad, but experience isn't wasted. You can always use paint to cover mistakes. Well, my paint is my mistake. I do like, oh, there you go. And I'm talking about turn to a game. Um, yeah, I don't believe in mistakes. Um, I believe in lessons and learning lessons and failing. Um, I think that those are very important skills and tools that uh, we should embrace is doing something and failing and being okay with it. I have tried stuff in painting and totally screwed it up. I've tried sculpting stuff and totally screwed it up and i still put it on the table and i still show it to my friends and you know because it's part of the process it's part of the experience you know a wise man once said being bad at something is the first step of being kind of good at something and i fully embrace that philosophy and i think it's super important to remember um, you know, you got to try and you got to fail and, and then you keep it, you keep the thing you failed at and you go, look at this thing five years from now, 10 years from now, look at this thing I did. Holy cow. Uh, it's so bad, lol. And then you look at the stuff you compare you or what you're doing now. And that's what matters is that journey that journey of exploration and growth, that journey of trying and failing to get good at something you want to be good at, you know? It's not wasting a miniature. It's not, you know, messing it up. It's a hobby, you know? And you're doing it for fun. And sometimes the fun is trying it and just completely whiffing. I think that that's important to remember, you know, you know, if you, if, if you, if it's for a competition, well, that's a different topic. If it's for a studio, that's a different topic. But if it's for you and you tried it and you learned something, you didn't fail. You succeeded. You succeeded more than other people. You know, when I talk about uh, ideas, like somebody goes, ah, I'm an idea guy. Everybody's an idea guy. Doing stuff, that's what matters. Ideas are a dime a dozen. Trying and failing and learning. I've been talking about this for quite a while now, I'm sure. 
Josh Preston and Mark are sick of it. And my kid and my partner are too. It's like failing isn't a failure. Not learning from the failure. That's what's failing. That's when you're actually failing. Doing something and gaining experience and then trying it again and being better at it and having a watermark for your growth and progression, that's magic. That's, that's the human condition and, and just the human experience. And it's awesome. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of stripping miniatures. I like having a uh, watermark for where I've grown and learned. I've got, I got, I own badly primed miniatures in my collection. I'm just like, yep, I didn't know how to do that. Lol. But I also got to a point where I was like, I'm messing up so many prime jobs, I'm just getting an airbrush, and then I never messed up another ever. We're doing dark gray pants. I was talking about other stuff. Wasn't talking about the paintings. Glue-based primer? I don't know what glue-based primer is. Get a little darker in that nook and cranny. And we're definitely going to have to highlight that leather one more time. I was painting and I looked up and there's so many messages I couldn't keep up. Emphasize the darkness on this super massive back. Let's kick out this magenta axe. I'm going to use a little cross hatching. To build color in. Let's add a little off white to that. Just throw a little texture on that. Visual interest. Let's do off blue and magenta mixed together. I 
I start when I first started painting. That was like the big trick. It was like leaving a little bit of the black primer in the nooks and crannies. It's just like, look at my deep shadows. I'm so smart. Are we going to spend more time on this axe than anything else? I feel like we could have thrown a little teal in there, just really going crazy. Look at that pink axe. Teal glow on the actual axe. Done. Maybe not today. I got like 10 minutes. But if I can find a teal ink. This is where, where's Tony? Where's my Tony? How about Adriatic blue? Yes, yes. I'm okay, thank you. See, I complain I don't have a Tony and then Summer comes in to try to help. Summer got my back. That's how the AMG crew rolls. You mess with one, you mess with all. We're doing off-white. Real quick, I gotta get this off-white on. This is a secret to glows. If you wanna know more secret to glows, you should check out Atomic Mass Games on YouTube. Some of our previous videos include the secret to glows. Should I say smash that like button? Is Schick in here? Yeah, he was. Oh. I just saw somebody respond. I like the Zenith highlights. Yeah, Zenith highlighting is great. Way simple. I'm mean, going to do a quick wash on this black and now watch. Highlight. 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 Now paints a little thin. A little zip and zip. some of those redefine those shapes yeah I like this miniature I think it has a lot of uniqueness He's very mega buff.
And you can paint him however you want. Which is the fun of miniatures. Getting to tell your stuff. All right, we're in a little black tar magenta. We're gonna black and around the axle a little bit here just to get a little more zing. Clean that up. We're going to use also this to put on the axe haft, like a nice black magenta because he's got a mystical axe. Kind of like Joe Satriani. Oh yeah, hot rod flames on his pants. I'm into this. Uh, do we have a poker in here for paint pot poker? I thought I brought one in here. And I don't see an exacto. There's a push pin. There's Joy Measures, right? It's like some of these older classic paint schemes are kind of funky and, you know, they might not resonate with you, but it's a miniature, so you get to do what you want to do. That's the exciting part. That paint did not get mixed up enough. I think that's like the third time I've tried that Adriatic Blue and it's like the third time I've realized it's not mixed properly and it just comes out gummy. And then I'm always like, I'm going to mix that after the stream. And then guess what I don't do? Because it's always like, I got to go to a meeting. Uh, gooey, chewy, I would... Suspect some information at me, Stravaganza. Let's think about this for a minute. Oh, see, I'm starting to get a plan. Starting to get a plan. 
This is way more turquoisey than teal, sorry. But that's okay. I think this will work in the long run. I'm getting some ideas. I'm getting some ideas. I'm using the blue jar real quick. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, two, one. Are we back? We're back? And we're back. I'm getting an idea. I need some nice thick paint though. Let's think about this. How do I want to do this? Okay, it's coming to me. Helix Gaming, what up? Hello, Raid. How goes it? Thanks for joining. We're just now almost done with our hour-long Scourge painting. We'll just add some funky textures. And we're going to keep working this axe. That axe is going to be a beacon, a beacon to destruction. So now we're just working some lightning bolts. And these will probably be worked a couple times to get the shapes right. And I'll do inks over top to develop the color. doesn't need to be perfect on the first pass it's a it's a process right you you develop the look of it it doesn't you don't just hit it the first time a little crackle down the middle This is very light, it's very delicate.
Yeah, I love the brightly colored like uh, opportunities that uh, Crisis Protocol brings to uh, game stores, right? It's like this unique, vibrant, poppy game that just looks so great across the table. It's very eye-catching. It's a lot of drama. So much drama. Okay, once again, a little ink. I'm going to draw that out super thin. We're just tinting it. Leaving some of that white showing. And we can work over one more time or two more times, depending. We can even develop some staggery lines with the ink. It's fun when you're doing special effects. Those are usually called watermarks or coffee stains where the wash or the ink dries poorly and it's usually something you try to avoid but when you're doing special effects you can actually use them to your advantage to create a more visually interesting uh, shape. Because you want that imperfect feel. Yeah, the Bifrost base is super exciting to paint. Uh, Schick went over that last week in the way he did it. I don't know if we have another Heimdall on the schedule. Can't remember. Dark in the bottom. So this is now going to be my process for a little bit. Darkening and lightening this area of effect. With teals and blues and kicking back to white. Uh-oh. I went five minutes over. Am I in trouble? No, not yet. Not yet? Was that a threat? <laughs> no. I felt like it was a threat. So much easier if I flip him upside down. Bop that one. It's easier to do when he's upside down. Is I? Yeah, well, yeah, that one. Because I'm right-handed. Mm -hmm. I like to come in from the side. Look at that intensity. Of 
All right, I'm gonna put a little of that teal into this axe on his chest. Just as a sub shade. And then we can call it. I'm so close to done. What do I have left? I got a little bit more highlighting on the skin. Um, I need to finish the axe. What else? Um, I need to highlight his uh, goatee and mustache. Uh, I think the pants are pretty close. They probably just need a little bit of work here and there. Um, I need to do a bit of um, oh, that's going to be cool. Uh, and a little bit of work on the, uh, oh, the, the metal bits. I don't have the metal bits at all. Should we cast a little light from the axe on there? I think the answer is yes. Throw a little blue hit on that side. He's so close to done. Oh my gosh, but I guess we got to wrap it up. Sorry, what? What? No. I don't have time to finish. I don't have time to finish. Like maybe another 30 minutes, which we don't have time for. Oh, you hear that, folks? I can have 30 minutes, but I can't have it on camera. Nah, I'll finish him up later. Okay, so he's so close to done. I think we did a lot and we learned a lot. Hopefully that was informational and uh, uh, inspirational. Um, I'm going to talk light. I guess we'll go. Should I do this? All right. So remember, check us out every Tuesday and Wednesday, 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Yes, I'm getting the nod. Uh, here at Twitch for Atomic Mass Transmissions Live. And upcoming on July, what's the dates? 14th, 15th, 16th. You can check us out. Me Extravaganza. We're coming to you live, nonstop. I mean, we're going to leave for the evening, but... Uh, Whole lot of content coming your way from Ace Travaganza. Check us out then because it's going to be a lot of fun stuff, a lot of cool stuff, and you should uh, totally check that out. So until next week, we'll catch you later. Have a good one, and go be the heroes you want to be. Bye, y'all. And now I pick up my skirt. We're, wait, we're locked in the room for Mini Travaganza? What? We're doing a lock-in? I haven't done a lock-in since high school.